A week or so ago, I got tasked with trying to prove an assertion from one of my videos that Hassan Piker is biased, uses bad argumentation, and spreads political propaganda. If only there was a way to do that in the form of a YouTube short. You try to be unbiased? Fuck no, of course I'm biased. What are you fucking stupid? Yes, I'm biased. If so yeah, I think that just about covers it. Thanks, Hassan. You made that kind of easy. Now that first part I posted on November the 4th, and it already has some frankly unbelievable responses like these. I had one person coming to say, there is a difference between being biased and a liar. Hassan reports the truth, then tells you how he feels about it. Same cannot be said for most Republicans. And note the whataboutism at the end there. And another came in to say, I mean, so what? Everyone is biased in some way due to their material position. Doesn't mean his whole political perspective is wrong. No, but I fear what it may mean is that his whole political perspective is biased. I cannot believe there are people here defending bias. It will give you a completely skewed and inaccurate perspective of the world. Bias can take many forms, and I would not describe any as good. It could mean ignoring or dismissing unpalatable facts. It could mean cherry-picking data. It could mean interpreting facts to favour one side or another. Bias is almost never a good thing. Not only will it not take you close to the truth, it will consistently lead you further away from it. So, let's see what Ethan Klein has got in the way of arguments. Does he do any better than Hassan? Well, yes, kind of. It would have been helpful for me if Ethan had been dumb enough to loudly declare his bias like Hassan did, so I'm going to have to work a little harder, but frankly, only a little harder. And here's what Ethan had to say about when Joe Rogan got COVID and talked about the treatment that he'd received. Joe Rogan, who lives on elk meat, egg yolk and human growth hormone, with lungs full of tar, thinks he's healthier than everyone. And where is the argument in there? It's all ad hominems. I'll leave it to you to decide, dear listener. If a doctor does a study on COVID vaccines and the whole study is well researched, does the study become invalid if it's later found out, shock horror, that the doctor eats elk meat? Or is that completely irrelevant and proving nothing? And we have Ethan Klein telling us what Joe Rogan thinks. So we have mind reading entering the tweet as well. And it's not like Joe Rogan even could have prescribed himself those drugs. These were allegedly prescribed to him by his physician. So the physician is apparently wrong, seemingly on the basis of nothing more than Ethan's preconceptions. Ethan goes on to say, This mf -er is such a bitch, but when he got COVID, he threw the kitchen sink at it. If you're so healthy, just ride it out like you say a man should. Dude has caused so much vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, and he doesn't even have the balls to stand by the shitty preachers. Now he's on his show talking about how fat people should just die of COVID. Dude is such an effing piece of shit. So I'm not sure why Ethan seems to be taking that so personally and... Oh. Yeah, I think I get it. It was a bold choice for Ethan to turn up at that conference looking like a cross between comic book guy from The Simpsons and a paedophile. And that may be unfair to comic book guy from The Simpsons, because even he dresses better than Ethan Klein. Comic book guy at least had the sense to go for simple sneakers and not multicoloured neon socks with sandals. Jesus Christ, Ethan. He dresses like a stereotypical German tourist from the 1970s. Instead of getting vaccinated, he takes Regeneron, an experimental drug that was developed alongside mRNA vaccines. His logic makes no sense. And then credits Ivermectin, which does fucking nothing for COVID. And that last part, where did Ethan get that from exactly? That's something I don't think you'd ever catch an actual scientist saying. And I don't even believe anyone said that. So did Ethan actually do the research himself? Was Ethan quoting some actual unknown scientist? 
because I can think of no scientist making such an unequivocal statement about what's essentially trying to prove a negative. And here Ethan is trying to act like he's the voice of science, making an absolute statement of fact while quoting no scientist or research that I can find. He's acting like he's respecting and representing the science, while in reality, I think he's just making shit up. And frankly, from that comment, I don't believe he's even read any of the research. And this is something that rarely gets up my nose. That being, people that treat science like a religion, and in doing so, miss the entire point of science. Who died and made Ethan Klein the king and spokesperson for science? Being told to believe the science by people that have never read it, don't seem to understand it and flagrantly misrepresent it at every opportunity for their own political benefit. The strongest statements you're ever likely to get on this issue from a scientist is, there has to date been no evidence proving the effectiveness of ivermectin in treating COVID-19. And I doubt it would even be that strong because there have been studies that have shown effectiveness, such as the Al Ghazar study out of Egypt that has since been retracted. Other scientists have cast doubt on the methodology used in some of those studies. What would have been a better statement was if Ethan had said, the FDA has not authorized or approved ivermectin for use in preventing or treating COVID-19 in humans or animals. And Rogan also didn't credit ivermectin in isolation. He credited modern medicine and the mix of drugs that he'd been prescribed by his doctor. And it turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z uh prednisone, everything. Uh, and I also got an NAD drip and a vitamin drip, and I did that three days in a row. And so here we are on Wednesday, and I feel great. A wonderful, heartfelt thank you to Modern Medicine for pulling me out of this so quickly and easily. And uh, my love to all of you. In addition, while we're on the subject of blatant misinformation, can people, mostly the media, please stop calling ivermectin a horse dewormer. It's cleared for human use and has been since 1987 as an antiparasitic. It has a fine safety record. And like I say, it's been used in humans at this point for 35 fucking years. Please stop calling it a horse dewormer. It's a pejorative and manipulative use of language. Also, Please do not take medications intended for animals. Dosage is very important, and the dosage for an 80 kilogram human is markedly different to the dosage for a 300 kilogram horse. Also, when I thought about Ethan Klein making horrible arguments, this one jumped right to my mind. A tweet he sent out in November 2021. People who encourage you to do your own research on issues with overwhelming scientific consensus are fence-sitting disingenuous grifters who prioritise money over truth. It's become one of the most socially damaging and cowardly ways to cop out. So, what do I think is wrong with that? Well, I think, frankly, people should do their own research. I've spent time in scientific academia. Doing your own research is fine. I've never heard a scientist say anything otherwise. Science is not a thing that should require belief from the general public. Science is not a church and scientists are not priests, giving you the information from on high. You can read it yourself and don't be scared to do that. A lot of scientists are happy if they can get anyone to pay attention to their work. It's also mostly ad hominem. So, should we believe scientists no matter what? I'd say no. Science is not a religion. Scientists are not infallible. If scientists are always right and the public should always believe them no matter what, then what should the public do when two scientists disagree with each other? The scientist is not supposed to be the important part of the scientific method. Their data and experimentation is supposed to be the important part. So should we believe the overwhelming scientific consensus? 
I'd say yes and no. It's an argument of unpopular, that because an idea is popular, it must therefore be correct. There have been plenty of times when the overwhelming scientific consensus turned out to be faulty. Scientists, however, they're portrayed in foggish Hollywood fiction are just human after all and can be prone to mistakes and vanity just as anyone else's. But unlike Hassan Piker, scientists are supposed to try and rise above bias and they don't always make it. Theories that are accepted as mainstream now have not always been so. Quantum theory and relativity in their time both faced strong opposition leading the German Nobel Prize winning physicist Max Planck to say, a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that's familiar with it. And this is often paraphrased and simplified to the saying that science advances one funeral at a time. And he said that because of how entrenched in their positions the old guard of his time were. So, should you do your own research? I say yes, because the doors to science should never be barred to the public. And academia should not be like the Vatican, but it's a qualified yes, because if you haven't got the time to understand the subject yourself, and most people don't, and there's nothing wrong with that. Even scientists don't understand the whole of science, there's just too much to know and most scientists have a narrow field of expertise, be it astrophysics, genetics or biochemistry. And if you don't have the time or the interest, you could frankly do a lot worse than believe the scientific consensus, if it exists. Although an idea's popularity doesn't make it necessarily true, if an idea is universally accepted by experts in the field, it has quite a good track record for being true. It's a better idea than asking the general public. So if you want to read the research for yourself, do it. No scientist should be asking you for blind faith, but if you do read it, maybe have some humility. If you've decided that the theory of evolution is wrong based on five minutes of casual reading, you should maybe do more reading and make sure you thoroughly understand it before you start writing to the newspapers and trying to debunk it. So I think it's fair to say that my video in response to my critics last week came in for some heavy criticism again. The responses varied greatly in their quality. Funnily, a lot of the people did exactly the things that I was criticising in that very video that they commented under. So more smears, ad hominems and fallacious non-arguments. Now there were roughly 200 comments in total under this video, including my replies. So we get the smears. If I criticise these people, I must be a clout chaser, a Republican, an idiot, and one person apparently very unhappy that I'm British. One person came in to say that apparently I make content angry at, quote, gaze on my TV box. And this came from someone who, when asked, couldn't cite a single example of me doing so. All this, as well as the usual array of crappy ad hominems, and who knew a short bus could also act like a clown car? But I also got a comment from one Black Phoenix family who took issue with my video, feeling that after criticising these creators, all of the receipts for those criticisms should have been there in the video to prove the assertions that I made. Initially, I wanted to keep the video snappy and thought that many of the comments I made should have been self-evident, but in retrospect, I think this person may have a point, hence this video. And this raises the question of why individual fans from these creators' audiences end up making the same fallacious arguments as the creators that they watch. Is it selection bias? So the people that will put up with these bad arguments are the ones who stick around because they're like-minded. Or is it that these creators are training their audiences to make bad arguments? Or are members of the audience trying to emulate the people they watch? To finish up, I'd like to read to you a quote attributed to the late George Carlin that goes, the larger the group, the more toxic. The more of your beauty as an individual, you will have to surrender for the sake of group thought. 
And when you spend your individual beauty, you will also give up a lot of your humanity. You will do things in the name of the group that you would never do on your own. Injuring, hurting, killing, drinking are all part of it because you've lost your identity. Because you now owe your allegiance to this thing that's bigger than you are and that controls you.